I, I've seen success as a major problem in organizations, you know. Sometimes they take success as a pedestal, not as a stepping stone. And when you take success as a pedestal and not as a stepping stone, what happens is that success gets to your head and people become arrogant. They become so complacent and they will shut down all possibilities where they can make some improvements. Because if you think it is a pedestal, you're stuck. It keeps you there, but not too long. Success can reach complacency and complacency can lead to mediocrity and mediocrity can take away all your potential to be the excellent people that you can be. There are temptations in successful organization. And one of the top temptations for managers and leaders in an organization is that the leaders of successful organizations, they stop working on themselves. They become the kind of annoyed toward people they stop developing themselves. They stop improving them or the business. And it is really essential today that we become learners and to learn again. Like Alan Toffler once said, the literate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Weak leaders are like travel agents. Great leaders are like tour guides. They will guide you, they'll show you the way, and they get out of the way. Temptation number two in an organization is that leaders of successful organizations stop thinking big. Okay, They get to be kind of the players who play it very safe. They play a defensive game, play not to lose. And usually they keep getting this pat at the back of appreciations after appreciation. The pat kind of becomes a massage, they get so used to it and they stop thinking big. Don't let the pat on your back to pick up a massage, right? Don't get too comfortable with success. Unsuccessful leaders, they focus on survival. Average leader, they look at maintenance, but successful leaders are always focused on conquering new heights. They are not playing to lose, they are playing to win, they play very offensive, they go for the attack, they go for the next big thing. That's what leaders do. Temptation number three, leaders of successful organizations stop leaving from the front. Managers switches to more of paperwork and less of paperwork, which is bad again. See, in, in an organization, leaving from the front means that you attend a meeting where your presence can actually make a difference. You stay involved, even in the hiring process of your organization. You do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with your people, you do the mentoring, you reach out to help people get better at what they do. You make yourself available for questions, ideas, and sometimes solving problems. You are there to give the right evaluation, acknowledgement, and appreciation to your people when it is needed. And you manage vision more than managing people. You know, Great leaders, great leaders, they manage vision. They don't try to look at managing people. You cannot manage people. You can manage vision. You can show the way, and then you got to get out of the way. You should not be blocking the way. That's what leaders should do. Show the way, get out of the way. Temptation number four in an organization is the leaders of successful organization, they stop developing others, they stop developing people, they become so self-consumed, they have that uh, long-ranger mindset and a great example is some of these leaders, they act like they are like a banyan tree, you know what banyan tree is, in a banyan tree, when you, when you become like a banyan tree in an organization, you may look very tall and giant, and, but there is a side effect to a banyan tree. Nothing grows underneath it. Nothing grows underneath a banyan tree. Stop being a banyan tree. You got to be the person who will lift up people. Some of these leaders, some of these managers, what they do, because of their personal insecurity, they hoard information, they hoard their knowledge and skills, and they become so selfish that they don't want to transfer it to somebody. They don't want others to get smarter. So they hoard the information, they hoard all their knowledge and skills, and they ignore people development completely, which is really not leadership. 
And they also get to the delusion that, okay, nobody is as capable as I am. So if something has to be done around here, I should be the one doing it. 